फ्रेंड्स माय रिटायर्ड लाइफ फाउंडेशन की तरफ से आप सबका हार्दिक स्वागत है अभी रिपब्लिक डे आने वाला है और हम आज की जो सबके सुनो प्रोग्राम है पेट्रियोटिक और नेशनलिज टीम लेके आए हैं इस प्रोग्राम को संचालन करने के लिए हमारे साथ में है मौजूद है अपने प्रिय मित्र कृष्ण बेनी मैडम जी मैं उनसे आग्रह करता हूँ कि वो आए और प्रोग्राम का संचालन करें कृष्ण बनी जी फ्लोर इज ओपन टू मैडम थैंक यू सर uh please excuse for the noise from out there is some road repair going on okay good evening shubh sandhya hearty welcome to all my dear friends this evening of man ki baat by our own mrl friend jisko sunne hum sab baithe hain sabko sunne as we are aware the theme as uh, is patriotism and we are awaiting republic day in a day after one day rather and on this day the flag is unfurled so a little bit of trivia before starting unfurling happens on republic day by president of india is isliye isko fehrana kehte hain and to start the program of man ki baat who else is better than our own modi ji modi ji please aaiye apne man ki baat kahiye thank you thank you आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन पेट्रोटिज्म इन पर्टिकुलर वे फॉर सर्टेन पेट्रोटिक पर्सन से समथिंग आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक वट इज पेट्रोटिज्म वट इज नेशनलिज्म हाउ दे डिफर एंड वाई वी शुड बी पेट्रियोटिक एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा सो आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट बिफोर टॉकिंग ऑन पेट्रियोटिज्म वी मस्ट डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन पेट्रियोटिज्म एंड नेशनलिज्म patriotism and nationalism are two concepts that are often confused with each other and used interchangeably sun sunai pad raha hai aap logo ko in reality there are distinct differences between the two patriotism is a feeling of love devotion and sense of attachment to a homeland or a country or to the traditions culture and history of a country that make a nation unique it is a feeling of pride in one's nation and its achievements and a sense of loyalty to its people patriotism encourages one to take part in the betterment of their country and to serve if it needs be nationalism on the other hand is an ex dream form of patriotism it centers on the idea of nation being superior to all others and holding a sense of entitlement to dominate and rule over other nations nationalism is more aggressive and hostile form of patriotism and can lead to conflicts between countries in conclusion patriotism is a positive feeling of pride and love for one's nation while nationalism is a more extreme form of patriotism that can be aggressive and damaging to other countries the glaring examples of nationalism is patriotism of adolf hitler who was responsible for second world war now mother and motherland that is our country in the in the so it is natural to have a sense of love and devotion towards it loyalty to the land of birth is the natural quality of a human being man is not free from the attachment of mother and motherland till death the country whose people sacrifice their body mind and wealth without selfishness on the altar of their nation that country is considered super powerful in the world patriotism means loving one's country patriotism or in hindi we can say desh bhakti can be understood from the poems few lines of the poems of hindi poet jo bhara nahi hai bhavon se behti jisme ras dhar nahi wo hriday nahi patthar hai jisme swadesh ka pyar nahi wo khoon kaho kis matlab ka jisme ubal ka naam nahi wo khoon kaho kis kis matlab ka aa sake jo desh ke kaam nahi some of the great patriots who made great sacrifice for india include mahatma gandhi bhagat singh shivaji 
राणा प्रताप रानी लक्ष्मीबाई सुभाष चंद्र बोस एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा दीज पीपुल हैव सेक्रीफाइस देयर लाइफ फॉर द कंट्री विदाउट एनी सेल्फ इंटरेस्ट आवर आर्मी सोल्जर्स लव देयर कंट्री वेरी मच दे डू नॉट हेजिटेट टू सेक्रीफाइस देयर लाइफ फॉर द कंट्री इट डज नॉट मीन दैट ऑल द सिटीजन्स ऑफ द कंट्री शुड बिकम आर्मी सोल्जर्स to show patriotism we can show patriotism in many ways all we can do for the patriotism is, is wherever we are and whatever we do we should do our duty sincerely with the target nation first we should not adopt any corrupt practice for self benefit so that the nation has to suffer we should try to follow all the rules and regulation made by the country properly we should not do anything by which the pride and honor of our country decreases living and is stain in the honor of country we should use the public property and resources of the country carefully and we should not waste them means should be used carefully we should share in the good works done for the country give respect to national heritage national anthem and national flag etc we should be ever caste and creed and religions so that our nations can prog- our nation can progress in the end i just want to say that be a good patriot and always show your participation in such work which will make the name of our country high in the Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Modi ji. A very insightful uh, difference between patriotism and nationalism, and really highlighting why patriotism is a better option. Definitely, I too agree with you. But is patriotism restricted to flag unfurling and singing and spending a holiday? Absolutely not. We need to celebrate remembering many unsung heroes who fought for the freedom. and also the current heroes that is our all three forces and the allied ones i'll be touching upon a few of both in between the enriching talk by our friends so anand lakshman kanere was a very young freedom fighter i don't think many know about him he killed the character of nasik in british india and at a very young age just 18 he was tried and executed by the british court so such people are there behind what we are living today and in the same venture i called up call upon our own anand anand saxena ji a scientist by profession but very knowledgeable in many other fields anand ji aap ki baat kahiye thank you vina ji for giving me so much pleasing words and all thank you very much thank you sangupta sir giving you a chance to speak on this sabki suno program <clears throat> you are very right vina ji there are many heroes there are many freedom fighters who are unsung and are not known to many of us not known to indian citizens they may be male or female so today on eve of republic day नारी शक्ति महान है तो मैं कुछ ऐसे लोगों की बात करूंगा फीमेल फ्रीडम फाइटर की दे आर मेनी बट आई टॉक अबाउट वन ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ द टाइम स्टेड एंड ऑल सो वाइल मोस्ट फीमेल फाइटर्स दैट हैव बीन रिकॉग्नाइज बिलोंग टू इलाइट और मिडिल क्लास बैकग्राउंड दे आर नंबर आर ओनली हैंडफुल दीज वर दंबर्स ऑफ ऑर्डिनरी फेसिस फ्रॉम हम्बल बैकग्राउंड बैकड्रॉप कंजर्वेटिव हाउस होल्ड and with no formal education who battled against the british raj they gave selfless sacrifices and ever laid their life to see their nation independent and flourishing one such forgotten female whose contribution has been neglected was mrs tara rani shrivastava she was born in siwan district of bihar patna near patna and she was passionate about the independence struggle from quite from a quite young age 
She was married at the age of 13 to a freedom fighter named Hulendu Babu. He was also an active participant in Mahatma Gandhi's Quit India movement. At the time when women did not step out of the house, she gathered. Tara Rani Shivastava gathered like minded uh, women to educate them about the Gandhiji's independence struggle. She galvanized women from her surroundings, villages, and motivated them to rise in the protest against the British rule and inspired them to participate in the Quit India movement. On 12th August 1942, Mahatma Gandhi called upon to hoist the minister flag on the roof of Sivan's police station. You know, at that time, all police stations, they were controlled by the uh, British shirts only. Or maybe Indian, but they were loyal to the British rule. Fulendu Babu assembled a massive crowd of men and women to hoist the national flag and is standing shoulder to shoulder with him was his wife, Tara Rani Srivastava. Raising anti British Raj slogans, they proceeded to Sivan police station with tricolor flag in the hands of Tara Rani Srivastava. The police, in order to control the demonstration, resorted to Lati charge. On, protest, on protesting crowd, when the protesters became uncontrollable, the police opened fire upon them, and in this fire, Flendi Wabu soon fell to police bullets. But Tara Rani was dauntless, and she bandaged her husband's wounds uh, by uh, uh, by cutting his uh, sari's pallu and all. And she bandaged, and she continued to march towards the police station with national flag in her hand. Such was her dedication towards the independent struggle. By the time she returned from the police station, her husband has come to the police bullets and passed away. On 15th August 1942, a prayer meeting was held at Chapra in honor to her husband's sacrifice for the, for the country. Though her husband died, but Tara Rani's patriotism did not die with her husband, as many would have expected from a woman in her times. It is indeed, in fact, that time, even for women, they were not supposed to come out from the house. They were supposed to be confined in the four walls of their house and what to talk about the widows. But Tara Rani got courage and she continued her struggle for the freedom of. India till uh, till uh, the uh, nation got independence on 14, uh, 15 August 1947. It is indeed unfortunate that freedom struggle like Tarani Srivastava have been uh, lost in the shadows of time and remain unsung. The unsung female warriors should be celebrated no less than other freedom fighters. So that was our Tarani Srivastava. She sacrificed and she became widow at a very young age because of her involvement in uh, struggle for, uh, for the freedom of India. So that was, uh, there are many women, but yeah, we, we cannot uh, talk about all the women. Uh, she was one of them. So we tribute to all freedom fighters who sacrificed to free our country from the British clutches. And of course, to the present air force who are there because we are here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ananji. Really, we talk about uh, women empowerment, etc., etc., reservations for women and all that. But we salute these women who were emancipated years, years, years back, who were freedom fighters, not known to many, as you said. Thank you so much for enlightening about her. Thank you much. Similarly, there was a person called Tirpur. Kumaran, he is also known as Kodi Kata Kumaran in South. That means who protected the flag. He was killed with the, by the police onslaught in the banks of a river in South because he was holding the Indian nationalist flag. Mm -hmm. So definitely such people are not known. We should, in between like these talks, bring out their names also. And now we present Naveen Dugalji, who also keeps the MRL flag flying high with his photography. Naveen ji. 
Ready? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Namaskar. Namaskar. Good evening, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to speak a few lines on the Constitution of India and about the 26th January, the importance of patriotism. All have known that the Constitution of India was written by the late Dr. Ambedkar Sahib and a group of many eminent people from Sikh community, Hindu, Muslim, Christian, um, all states of India. They had a great discussion among themselves and about every para which was written. Then it was the contributed and summed as by the chairperson, Dr. Ambedkar Ji. And the diaspora, that is a very simple constitution of India written in four or five lines, which I will not take time. But the most important thing is in the independence of India and this constitution came only after the sacrifices of many of the great personality like uh, Subhash Chandra Bose, whose birthday was yesterday, 23-1-23. And may, like Bhagat Singh, many of the other warriors, Shivaji and uh, unknown. So far, the history has been only talking about the British Empire still. It is high time that we understand what is our patriotism. Where do we stand? And how do we contribute and encourage youngsters to about our patriotism and the present. You will be surprised to hear that today the Prime Minister was speaking on life with a group of students of all states, each and every state, brought youngsters who had won some prizes or some writing, and they were shown around the Rashtrapati Bhavan and the Constitution and the main hall, the central hall. And it was questioned who sat on that chair. And they were made aware of our past, how from 1949, November, when they started the Constitution, Assembly was made. Then on 26th, January 1950, we finally got this Republic Day and the Constitution approved and put on the map of India. So the pillar of, like the Godfather, the pillar of writing the Constitution was Dr. Ambedkar and every each and every one of you. We are proud that we are citizens of India. The part, uh, the the brings us, what is, what is that great thing that today also we think? First of all, let me salute the Jawans, the Air Force and the Army who protect our lands, sea and air. But more than that, it is each and every one of us that has to bring us together and move forward. Try and try until we succeed. We did not give a un undue importance to any politics, parties or anything. It is in yourself. So priority of patriotism is on three stages. Me and my, my family and my area. Second is me and my state and my country. And third is what can I do for this country? Nobody would go back if I, there is a sacrifice to be made. That's what I say, patriotism. Furthermore, today also happens to be a Parikram Devas, the youth motivation and patriotism by one and all in each state, the Sansad, the sub 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 chand sare pillars, Malab, everybody has to remember that we have to respect ourselves, the receptivity of accepting the relationship, and more than that, that we have to be reconstitution or recondition ourselves. How can I be better in mind, body, and soul? to be a better you and to make a better India. That's what I say, patriotism to me. Yesterday I saw the film Uchai, where Amitabh Bachchan, a group of people, four people of different states, just joined together to go to the Himalayan uh, base. Though they were 70s, 80s, whatever, the, the, the patriotism shown by them, the spirit of togetherness as friends, irrespective of caste, creed, religion, or where they came from, they made it happen with all the difficulties. Whereas the youth always discard the young, I'm not trying to contradict, but we have to make <laughs> them understand that we also gone through hard times. We were also young, and one day we have become old. Doesn't mean that we are not patriotic. And second more is, 
let the youth respect the views of elderly people in terms of patriotism mm -hmm. in terms of their passion to give time to their parents and with that with this country bharat mata ki jai and wish everyone jai hind jai hind navin ji aapne bahut badi baat kahi bahut sare points aaj ekdam track pe continuously you said it very well ambedkar is not the soul person as many believe it's a team effort and he was the main person of course and they took care of the entire population's rights but what we must always remember is there is the other side of the coin which is the duties which we also should adhere to thank you so much and uh, coming to the another unsung hero komaram bhim from the gondi community a tribe community previously the tribe communities used to go to jungle so something and all that and they move on to the another jungle by the time this crop is ready they would come back but the bullying uh, british officers forest officers used to destroy all that making them unusable for anybody and so he organized the gorilla army to fight the atrocities on tribals of course as expected he was killed and uh, even now the tribes believe jal jungle zameen so they border for all these people they give respect for this and that is their motto even today ab hamare samne aayenge jiske naam pe jawahar lal hai jawahar lal choudhary ji namaskar and if i am not mistaken he has been with the khadi industry am i right sir yeah yeah you are right you very are right. rightly डेवलपमेंट एंड प्रोग्रेशन एंड प्रोजेक्शन ऑफ ए कंट्री जर्नलिज्म इज ए वेरी इज ए फोर्थ पिलर ऑफ द डेमोक्रेसी but i am talking about the uh, situation when india was not a democracy and india was fighting for the freedom there was a journalist by name ganesh shankar vidyarthi and ganesh shankar vidyarthi was uh, he belonged to uh, district kanpur to which i also belong to and ganesh shankar vidyarthi was born on 26th of october 1890 in alabad his father was a teacher in a gwalior estate and therefore his basic education was done in gwalior but then he shifted to alabad where he studied in kais parshala and then he shifted to kanpur and worked with many uh, journals and was fighting for the Uh, the uh, the the Indi indian uh, uh, freedom and writing all the uh, things about the exploitation of the countrymen uh, by the britishers in many journals in 19 in uh, 1916 he met mahatma gandhi and then he surrendered himself to mahatma gandhi and said i am fully involved with the freedom movement ganesh shankar vidyarthi started his own uh, uh, journal by name pratap and it was established in kanpur and uh, he started writing provocative articles uh, exposing the britishers the all the the exploitation of the people the poor the marginalized and everybody in 1922 he was uh, imprisoned for two years and then in he was released in 1924 but he was in a bad health but then he was made the uh, the chairperson of the up congress and there was a kanpur session of indian national congress where he was made to represent in vidhan sabha but he quit uh, shortly he was uh, against uh, again sent to jail in 1929 for satyagraha andolan 
and released in March 31. Unfortunately, in 1931, a Hindu-Muslim riot took place in Kanpur. And this journalist, brave journalist, Ganesh Shankar Vidyarthi, came in the front and tried to save the people from the unrest. And there he was assassinated. And he died in, uh, on uh, 24th and 25th of uh, uh, March, 1931. Our friends, I will narrate a very personal relationship with Ganesh Shankar Vidyarthi. In 1975, I was negotiating for the marriage of my sister with a family in Kanpur. It was referred by somebody. So I went to that family uh, and uh, when I knocked the door, I came inside and I saw a person clad with khadi, kurta, pajama and a Gandhi cap. I, I said, Namaskar, sir. I was surprised. What has happened? I have done something wrong. Then somebody came and he said, he cannot see. He is a blind. And he is a freedom fighter. And there I saw a photo of Ganesh Shankar Vidyarthi. Then I asked him, I asked him, शूट के प्रणाम किया फिर मैंने उनसे कहा मैंने अपनी भाषा में उनको बोला बाबूजी मैं मेरा नाम जवाहरलाल चौधरी है हां अब बैठिए आप उन्होंने मुझे बहुत आदरपूर्वक बैठाया बात की फिर मैंने पूछा आप गणेश शंकर विद्यार्थी की फोटो क्यों लगाए हैं तो बोला ये मेरे रिश्ते में भाई लगते हैं और गणेश शंकर विद्यार्थी इंटर कॉलेज फाउंडेशन के वो मेंबर थे और वहां पर आ, एक गणेश सेवा आश्रम एनजीओ बनाया गया जिसमें वो अटैच थे और मैं जब तक कानपुर में रहा चूंकि मैं केमिकल इंजीनियरिंग का स्टूडेंट था और फैकल्टी में था तो मैंने 1972 से 1981 तक केमिस्ट्री में आ, पढ़ाता था मैं उस गणेश शंकर इंटर कॉलेज में फिर जब मेरी बहन की शादी तय हो गई फिर मैं आपको एक घटना बताता हूं तो उनके जो बहन के फादर इन ला थे उन्होंने मुझसे कहा कि चौधरी साहब आपको एक बहुत ख्याल रखना पड़ेगा क्योंकि बारात में बहुत बड़े-बड़े लोग आने वाले हैं मैंने कहा बाबूजी मैं तो एक छोटा आदमी हूं उन्होंने कहा आप कोई फिक्र मत करिए इंतजाम सब मेरा होगा लेकिन आपको संभालना होगा बस और उस शादी में तमाम ऐसे बड़े-बड़े हस्तियां बाबू जगजीवन राम महादेवी वर्मा डॉक्टर रामकुमार वर्मा ये सब बड़े-बड़े साहित्यिक लोग थे ये सब आए थे और मैं उस परिवार का सदस्य हो गया जिसको आ, जिसका संबंध गणेश शंकर विद्यार्थी से था ये है एक छोटा सा परिचय एक जर्नलिस्ट का जिसने शहादत दी देश की आजादी के लिए शुक्रिया धन्यवाद बहुत-बहुत शुक्रिया जवाहरलाल जी आपने सही बताया है मीडिया का रोल बहुत महत्वपूर्ण होता है बट आजकल देखते हैं एंड वी नो मीडिया कैन ब्रेक और मेक अ सिचुएशन आल्सो बट आजकल रिस्पांसिबल मीडिया एंड रिपोर्टिंग बहुत कम दिखने को मिलता है इट्स रियली सैड ओके आगे बढ़ते हैं आ, एक बार समता मैडम ने बताया था खुदीराम बोस के बारे में वन ऑफ द वेरी वेरी यंग विक्टिम्स ऑफ इंडियन इंडिपेंडेंस मूवमेंट ही एंड प्रफुल भाई who were found guilty in Muzaffar conspiracy. They wanted to kill the judge by mistaken in the carriage where two British women were there, the bomb was uh, up to this thing. So, unko to die karke ho gaya. He was one of the very, very small person, less than 18 he was, actually. Uh, abhi hum aage badenge, aenge jo he has worn many hats. He is an academician. He is a talk, good talker. He is a storyteller. Sometimes he tries to say poems and sing. I am not too sure in remembering. Agarwal ji, thank you very much. Ke liye hume. Thank you very much. Am I audible? Yes, sir. So, thank you very much for the high, high words that you have used for me. I don't know whether I deserve those. So, let, let me first 
thank MRL and Dr. Sen Gupta for giving me this opportunity to talk to you people. And uh, Vinaji, you said very rightly, 26 January is flag hoisting, I mean unfurling, and 15th August is flag hoisting. So that's the major difference between the two, which many of us confuse. Most notices call it flag hoisting. So that, that's the wrong nomenclature. Anyway, my uh, among the list of uh, freedom fighters, Govind Balla Pant's name figures very prominently. So I'm going to share some thoughts about Govind Balla Pant. Uh, Govind Balla Pant was an Indian freedom fighter and the first chief minister of Uttar Pradesh. Alongside Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, and Vallabhbhai Patel, Pant was a key figure in the movement for India's independence and later a pivotal figure in the Indian government. He was one of the foremost political leaders of Uttar Pradesh, then known as United Provinces. Goenbala Pant was born on 10th September 1887 in Kut village near Almoda. He was born in a Marathi Karade Brahmin family that had migrated from present day Northern Karnataka to Kumayu region. His mother's name was Govindi Bai. Father Manwar Pant was a government official who was constantly on the move. And hence, Govind was brought up by his maternal grandfather, Badri Dutt Joshi, an important government official locally who played a significant part in molding his personality and political views. Pant studied at Allahabad University. Like every youth of the time, he was filled with feelings of patriotism after listening to the revolutionary leaders. For Pant, it was Gokhale whose speech motivated him. He read the works of other great men like Bankim Chandra and Dadawai Nauraji, and his patriotic feelings grew. He continued his studies, however, and was awarded the Lumsden Gold Medal for Excellence. He was a fluent speaker. Pant worked as a lawyer in Kashipur. Here he began active work against the British Raj in 1914 when he helped a local Parishad or village council in their successful challenge of Huli Begar, a law requiring locals to provide free transportation of the luggage of traveling British officials. In 1921, he entered politics and was elected to the Legislative Assembly of the United Provinces of Agra and Awadh. Known as an extremely capable lawyer, Pant was appointed by the Congress party to initially represent Ram Prashad Bismil, Ashfagullah Khan, and other revolutionaries involved in Kakori case in the mid 20s. He participated in the protests against Simon Commission in 1928. In those protests, he sustained severe injuries, which prevented him from straightening his back for the rest of his life. He was arrested many times and imprisoned for varying terms for organizing and participating in Satyagraha movements. Pant took over as the Chief Minister of United Provinces from 1937 to 39, continuing even after India's independence in 1947 till 54. Pant served as Home Minister from 1955 to 61. As Home Minister, he organized the reorganization of states along linguistic lines. He was also responsible for the establishment of Hindi as an official language of the central government and a few states. During his tenure as Home Minister, Pant was awarded the Bharat Ratna on 26 January 1957. In 1960, he suffered a heart attack. His health started deteriorating and he died on 7th March 1961 at the age of 73 from a cerebral stroke. At that time, he was still in office as the Home Minister, a Union Home Minister of India. Government of India released postal stamps on Pant in 1965 and then in 1988. Statues of Pant were installed at Mall Road, Nainital and near Sansad Bhavan, New Delhi. Today, several institu hospitals, educational institutions and foundations bear his name. A great freedom fighter and a follower of Mahatma Gandhi, Govind Balla Pant was a lawyer, a revolutionary and the Union Home Minister. Govind Pallab Pant served as the first Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh and today is remembered as the man who established, who abolished the Jamindari system in the state. He has been one of the most popular politicians in Indian politics. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.
I remembered my history classes when we have read about him. Yes, he not only a freedom fighter, he has played a pivotal role in post-independence in the government. So we have to be grateful for all his revolutionary ideas and implementations too. Thank you so much. The unfortunate uh, part was that he got he got severe injuries and mm. which made the rest of his life he could not straighten his neck. Yes. Still he did a lot. Thank you. That's much. what. Thank you. And uh, just a simple trivia. People apart from Subramanya Bharati, they think South has not got much of contributions. There was this Veera Pandya Kattabuman who was a small try this thing, but he was escaping the, for not paying the Lagan and he was escaping at that time. King of Pudukote betrayed him. So he was caught. And there was this simple person called Peer Ali Khan, who was a bookbinder basically, but inside his work, he used to distribute flyers, etc. for the freedom fighters. And hence he was imprisoned and executed. That is these people, small, small people, people are not aware, actually. Like we say in current times, the people working in the background is never talked about. People only in the front line come up as celebrities. Now I call upon our dear friend Ramani Murthy, who is a multi-talented with uh, mandalas and other artistics and singing and also definitely talking. Ramani ji, Ramani Murthy. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. My, I'm audible? Yes, yes, dear. Thank you. Thank you so much for the good words that you've said about me. <laughs> um, a very good evening to all my friends. And I, and I thank uh, Mr. Dr. Sen Gupta, sir, for giving me this opportunity uh, to speak in front of you all. Today, I'm going to speak about a fearless and brave woman, Chakali Ilama. During the early 20th century, India was in the middle of a struggle against British. However, there was a social evil lurking in the shadows, the caste system. At, at that time, during the Nizam era, era, in the present day Telangana, Dora's dominance caste landlords asserted their powers on the weak, several activities fought against them. Eventually, they became associated with the anti-caste movement. They rebelled against oppressive behavior of the upper caste. The movement also saw an activist who rose to fight against the people who oppressed her. She was Chakali Illama. She was born in 1895 into a family belonging to a washerman caste in Krishnapuram, Telangana. At the age of 11, she was married off to a Chityala Narsingha. Together, they had six children. Ilama used to wash clothes of many villagers and do free and forced labor for dominant castes. But even this wasn't enough to feed such a large family, making it difficult to survive. To make ends meet, Ilama decided to take up farming. She leased land from a neighboring village landlord family. Now a farmer, she chose to stop doing free labor that this decision ruffled some feathers. Village accountant who maintained the land records called Patwari, uh, Viram Neni Sheshagiri Rao, took notice of this and informed the caste landlord, Vishnu Ramchandra Reddy. Reddy was not happy with this decision and instructed his goons to sabotage Illama's crops. Meanwhile, Illama was a part of Andhra Mahasabha, a cultural and social organization. She had become prominent member. With their help, she fought against those goons. She said, this is my land. This is my crop. Who are you to take over my land and crop? It is only possible for you when I die. The battle was ugly and it led to death of one of her sons. Her husband and two other sons were also jailed. Illama, leaving Illama distressed and helpless, but she stood her ground and fought against Ramchandra Reddy. She fought for her right to land in a local court and won the case. She realized that her community faced atrocities every day and something has to be done about it. So she decided to take matter in her own hands. She joined the Communist Party of India 
and was an active member. She destroyed the Patwari's house and set up, a, set up a cornfield on the same land. And with the help of CPI, she redistributed the crop and wealth to the oppressed. She went on to join the Telangana Armed Rebellion. Together, they went against landlords and Nizam's Razakar's army in 1947. Soon her house became a center of activities conducted against the feudal landlords who collaborated with the Nizam. It was on September 10th, 1985, that the ferocious Ilama died at the age of 89. Her legacy is now being acknowledged by the people of Telangana. A statue has been installed in Hyderabad to remind people of her ferocious battle against the trinical zamindars. Chakali Lama's struggle against landlords and casteism inspired many people to stand up against the exploitation of the zamindars. Her legacy will be forever cherished by the people of Telangana. The brave woman of our freedom struggle and the unsung hero, Chakali Illama. Thank you. Thanks, Ramni Murthy. Because uh, to be honest, if I can accept it, it, I didn't know about her at all. So thanks for the enlightenment of this. Yes, many women have been emancipated and stood their grounds, but they had to face a lot also for that. Yes. Thank you so much again. Thank then you. Thank you. there are more tribal people like Birsa Munda, a member of Munda tribe, and who played a pivotal role in the history of Indian independence. And he brought out the religious millennial movement that emerged in Bengal presidency. It was one more trivia about the unsung hero. And now we are eagerly waiting to hear Ramani Ayer, who has spoken on very, very controversial subjects and given us a lot of enlightenment on very, very many topics. Ramani Ayer, please. Thank you. Thank you, Veena Ji. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sangupta, sir. Thank you, Veena Ji. Dear friends, uh, the speakers before me, Mr. R.K. Modi, has very nicely brought out the difference between patriotism and nationalism. In this connection, I would like to quote uh, uh, General de Gaulle, uh, Charles de Gaulle, who subsequently became the president of France. He, you know, he is a very, very blunt person. So he bluntly defined patriotism and nationalism. He said, patriotism is when love of your people comes first. Nationalism is when hatred for people other than your comes first. So that's Charles de Gaulle. Okay, having said that, we are all aware of a number of acts of patriotism displayed during our freedom womb struggle. We already heard about the women patriots uh, and then the journalist, Govind Mallav Panji, who most of us have seen in our own uh, lifetime. But today, I will tell you two real life anecdotes which will enable us to understand patriotism from a slightly different perspective. Now, the first story, for all of us, 15th August 1947, is a very important day. It was on this day that our country became free from British rule. Exactly 11 years prior to this date, that is on August 15, 1936, an interesting anecdote took, incident took place. The Indian hockey team led by the wizard Dhyan Chand was facing Germany in the finals of the Olympic hockey tournament in Berlin. Just before the match started, the team had bought in the Indian National, national Congress flag. You know, there was no national flag at that time. Into the dressing room, all Indian players saluted the flag and sang Vande Matram song and entered the field for the final game. Every German present in the stadium was having confidence that Germany would win the game. In fact, Adolf Hitler, who was at the peak of his power, was present at the stadium to support the German team. At the end of the first half of the game, India was ahead of Germany by one goal to nil. The ground conditions were not comfortable for the Indian players. The ground staff had prayed water on the ground before play. The shoes worn by the Indian players 
were having no spikes and so the indian players were skidding frequently uh, without on the grass turf when the german players were wearing shoes with the spikes which provided a better grip jan chand was finding it difficult to run on the turf using his shoes he immediately pulled off his shoes and started running with bare feet he could he could move faster and the end at the end of the game india won the match with a score 8 is to 1 lead and won the gold medal in fact uh, dhyan chand's game had impressed the entire crowd and they were all in great applause for him after the match was over hitler sent a word that dhyan chand should meet him when dhyan chand appeared before hitler hitler asked him what is your occupation dhyan chand replied i am in the british indian army hitler asked again what is your rank jan chand replied i am a lance knight equivalent to lance corporal hitler then said you come to germany i shall take i shall make you a colonel in the german army you can continue to play hockey for germany jan chand was taken aback with what hitler said but without a moment's hesitation replied india is my country and i am happy there i don't want to come here hitler was disappointed but hitler told him i appreciate your patriotism do whatever you feel right and walked off this is a fine example of display of patriotism with conviction in the presence of the most powerful military leader at the time who was offering very attractive incentive to change the loyalty every indian should feel proud to read this story now the next story is from israel which is perpetually which is perpetually at war defending its own territory all of us know the history a family of a, fam, a family of mother and five children lived in israel the father served in the army and was killed in the war in israel there is a rule that one member of each family has to serve in the army now it was the first son to join the army unfortunately even he was killed in the war this went on till all the four sons in the family were killed now the mother asked the fifth and the last son to join the army so he went to the army recruitment committee where they will decide about his recruitment to the army in the meeting the official said look already your family has suffered a lot all of your family members have been killed while serving in the army so it will be better if you don't join the army the fifth son was determined to serve in the army he replied no sir i am ready to serve in the army so they had a conversation for a long time and finally the officials were quite firm on the decision they told the son fifth son since your mother is old you have to look after her she needs you after she is no more we will show you we will allow you to join the army so the son returned home with a sad face explained the situation to the mother even the mother felt very very sad but the son, that the son could not join the army the next morning when the son went to his mother's room he found that his mother was lying dead on the bed she had committed suicide there was a letter on the table which read dear son now you can join the army the country needs you go and serve the country hats off to this lady who thought our country is of prime importance than her own life friends i leave it to you to decide who is a better patriot the mother who wanted her son to serve the country at the cost of her own life or the son who was keen to joining the army even after all his siblings were dead in the service of the nation thank you very much thank you ramni sir as expected you gave a sports angle and the patriotic angle of a soldier's family how that is what i will come to it a little later now anand ji and uh, ramni ji spoke about the female unsung heroes to add to that i'll just mention the names not about their journey jalkari bai who was a confidant of La rani lakshmi bai and kamla devi chatopadhyay who was a social reformer and also matangini hazra gandhi she is also called as buri gandhi that means the old woman 
we all know the universe is made of five elements of nature same way our forces are also work with five elements air force navy and army earth and uh, space and water and there is fire in them and there is a <coughs> sorry all the five elements and not only the three forces we are allied forces of bsf and many other allied distinct coastal guards everybody they are all patriots and also the i believe the routine guys we meet in life like a paper fellow milkman vendors and especially the farmers doctors etc are also patriotic people to the core it is an amalgamation of all that our country stands in solidarity that is why in this i read somewhere in this republic day they will be given the front line seats during the president's uh, parade very happy about that and when we are talking about uh, soldiers we cannot forget as you said the mothers the wives the family definitely they are also real patriotic generally recently i read about someone others if i had one more son i would have sent him so that is the spirit our family has so now i call upon shashi rastogi ji who is also from an army background family shashi ji uh, thank you so much uh, veena ji and thank you so much uh, um, dr sen gupta to giving me this opportunity to speak about the person who is alive and fought for the life uh, country so first of all main shuru karti hu unka naam hai uh, captain varun singh abhi aap sabko shayad dusre captain varun singh ki yaad aa raha hoga जिन्होंने जिनका की प्लेन हेलीकॉप्टर क्रैश हुआ था और वो भी पायलट थे एयरफोर्स के तो मैं जो कैप्टन वरुण सिंह की बात कर रही हूँ वो नेवी के कैप्टन वरुण सिंह हैं अभी और जिस समय उनकी ये घटना हुई है उस समय वो लेफ्टिनेंट थे ही वाज ए वेरी यंग ऑफिसर नाउ ही इज कैप्टन ऑफ द नेवी एंड आई एल टेल यू वॉट ही फेस एंड कैसे क्या हुआ बहुत ही संक्षेप में बताऊंगी क्योंकि डिटेल जो उन्होंने हमें बताए वो बहुत हॉरिबल थे और मतलब उनकी हिम्मत के हम दाद देते हैं हुआ इस तरीके से था कि ये जो है जामवाज नौसैनिक हमारे कैप्टन वरुण सिंह इन्होंने अपने सामने डेथ को देखा उसका सामना किया और सामना करके उसको हरा करके हमारे बीच फिर से वो ड्यूटी पर आ गए वो है हमारे जामबाज कैप्टन वरुण सिंह जो एक मरीन कमांडो हैं। कमांडो तीनों सेनाओं के विशिष्ट प्रशिक्षण के लोग होते हैं जो कि नॉर्मल लोगों से भी ज्यादा उनको कठिन ट्रेनिंग दी जाती है जंगलों में पानी में हर तरीके से और इनको जो है मरीन कमांडो क्योंकि वो नेवी में है इसलिए उनको मरीन कमांडो बोलते हैं और मरीन कमांडो फोर्स को जो है शॉर्ट में मार्कोस कहा जाता है जिनके बारे में मैंने शायद कभी अपनी रचना में बताने की कोशिश की थी और ये दुनिया की सबसे अच्छी फोर्स है इन्हें दुश्मन के इलाके में हवा में पानी में पानी के नीचे रास्ते में चुपके से कहीं भी ये जा सकते हैं और दुश्मनों का सफाया कर सकते हैं आपको जानकर हैरानी होगी कि नेवी खाली सी कोस्ट पर ही नहीं होती है नेवी की जो पोस्टिंग होती है वो पहाड़ों पर भी होती है वो किस तरीके से कि वहां पर हमारे कमांडोज जो हैं, वो इंटर सर्विसेज के साथ मिलके आर्मी नेवी एयरफोर्स के साथ मिल करके वो लोग वहां पर ऑपरेशन करते हैं मतलब वहां पर वो उसके लिए जाते हैं और ये घटना जो है दिसंबर 99 की है बहुत सारे डिटेल्स मैं नहीं बता पाऊंगी क्योंकि मुझे भी मालूम नहीं है मुझे भी बताया नहीं गया है ये घटना दिसंबर 99 की है कारगिल के युद्ध के बाद की कहानी घटना है ये आतंकवादियों का कहर जारी था वरुण सिंह आर्मी की टुकड़ी के साथ कश्मीर के से फोर्टी किलोमीटर दूर वुलर लेक के पास बांदीपुरा में एक बहुत ही खतरनाक ऑपरेशन को अपनी टीम को लीड कर रहे थे 
वह दो और लीड करते करते दो आतंकवादियों का पीछा करते 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 वो काफी दूर निकल गए उनकी टीम पेशी रह गई वो आगे निकल गए और दोनों जो थे आतंकवादी वो एक वहां बिल्डिंग थी गौशाला थी वो वहां छुप गए और उसमें से एक को तो उन्होंने वहीं पे खत्म कर दिया दूसरे दूसरा जो था कहीं और छुप गया था उसको भी वो ढूंढते रहे ढूंढते रहे ढूंढते ढूंढते उन्होंने देखा कि वो दीवार के पीछे बैठा हुआ है ये उन्होंने दीवार फांद ली और उसको भी उन्होंने वहीं पर खत्म किया ये करने के बाद जब वो वापस आने लगे तो इनके दिमाग में आया कि अरे ये कहीं जिंदा तो नहीं है और ये देखने के लिए वो उसको वापस देखने के लिए गए और जब वापस देखने गए तो दुर्भाग्यवश वहां पर एक ग्रेनेड पड़ा हुआ था जो कि फट गया और ये वहीं पर अचेत होकर के गिर गए किसी को कुछ मालूम नहीं इनको कोई होश नहीं इनका सीना फटा हुआ था जगह जगह स्प्लिंटर्स थे और उसके बाद वहीं पर और कम से कम हंड्रेड मेटल स्प्रिंटर्स इनकी बॉडी में चले गए खून की धारा बहने लगी हाथ फट गया क्या क्या नहीं हुआ उसके बाद जब इनको टीम के लोगों ने देखा कि अरे हमारे गाइड तो है नहीं हमारे सर नहीं है उनको ढूंढते 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 जब ट्रैक करते करते वहां आए तो देखा कि वो तो उनको लगा कि ये तो गए वीरगति को प्राप्त हो गए लेकिन किसी ने देखा कि उनकी आंखों में थोड़ी सी हरकत हो रही है कुछ हाथें उनकी हिल रही हैं तो उनको उन्होंने तुरंत उठा करके फर्स्ट एड दिया और फिर हेलीकॉप्टर से उनको बेस कैंप लेकर के आए बेस कैंप जब उनको ले जाया गया तो वहां पर उन वहां से उनको और अच्छी तरह से करके फिर और उनको बड़े हॉस्पिटल में लाया गया और वहां पर उनको डॉक्टर्स के इलाज और उचित देखभाल और सबसे जरूरी चीज थी कि उनका शांत स्वभाव दर्द को बिना चीखे चिल्लाए सहने की दृढ़ इच्छा शक्ति से लगभग दो साल लंबे समय तक वो हॉस्पिटल में रहे और उसके बाद वे ठीक हो गए लेकिन इस हादसे के निशान उनके शरीर में अभी भी पड़े हुए हैं छर्रे निकाल दिए गए हैं लेकिन कुछ छर्रे अभी भी उनकी बॉडी में हैं। और उस समय वो लेफ्टिनेंट रैंक के थे उनके सीने के दाहिनी और बाहिनी और हाथ के ग्रेडेड ग्रेनेड के कुछ छर्रे रह गए हैं जो कभी भी रक्त के प्रवाह के साथ यानी कि ब्लड फ्लो के साथ कभी कभी स्किन पर आ जाते हैं जो हमने खुद देखे और जब वो स्किन पर आते हैं तो उनको उसको काट करके ऑपरेट करके उनको निकाल दिया जाता है और उनको ये हिदायत है कि आपका वजन नहीं बढ़ना चाहिए आपको बिल्कुल वैसे भी एज इट इज उनको जब तक सर्विस में है कंट्रोल करना ही है अदरवाइज ऑल्सो उनको ये पक्की हिदायत है और भी कई चीजों की उनको हिदायत है और उसके बाद बहुत अच्छी बात मैं आपको बताने जा रही हूँ कि उनको शौर्य चक्र से सम्मानित किया गया शौर्य चक्र और उसके बाद कई सालों के बाद नेवी का एक ये जो कमांडो की ट्रेनिंग दी जाती है ये विशाखापट्टनम में उन्होंने इसकी यूनिट बनाई आई एन एस कर्ण और कैप्टन तब तक कैप्टन ये हो चुके थे और कैप्टन वरुण सिंह को वहां का कमांडिंग ऑफिसर बनाया गया और उनके विशेष नेवी के और उनके विशेष आमंत्रण पर हम लोग वहां गए थे और उन्होंने जो हमें इसका वहां पर वर्णन किया हमारे वहां पर बता करके तो हम लोगों ने यही कहा कि रियली वी सल्यूट यू नेवी का सल्यूट ऐसे होता है और आज भी बात करते समय अपने देश की रक्षा कर पाने के भाव से आज भी ये बात करते समय अपने देश की रक्षा कर पाने के भाव से उनकी आंखों में खुशी और तसल्ली के भाव देखे जा सकते हैं और हमें उन पर गर्व है बहुत सारे जो जवान हमारे वीर गति को प्राप्त हो गए उनको जैसे अभी दूसरे कैप्टन वरुण सिंह हैं उनको श्रद्धांजलि देती हूँ मैं उनको याद करती हूँ कि वो भी ऑफिस के सेना के काम से ही गए थे और ये कैप्टन वरुण सिंह जो है वो आज भी हमारे बीच में है और मैं हमेशा प्रार्थना करती हूँ कि ईश्वर उन्हें और अच्छी स्वास्थ्य दे और जो दृढ़ शिक्षा दृढ़ इच्छा शक्ति है उनमें वो उन वो वैसा सबको देखने को सब में वो वो चीज कि आपको बीमार है तो कैसे ठीक रहना है या जो हो गया लेकिन 
जो हुआ तो बहुत अच्छा हुआ क्योंकि उनके भा, हमारा भाग्य था कि वह हमारे बीच में फिर से हैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपको धैर्य पूर्वक सुनने के लिए बहुत धन्यवाद शशि जी आपको सुनते हुए क्या लगा होगा आपको सुनते हमको घुसबंस आ गए थे इट इज सच अ डिफिकल्ट टू हियर दिस वॉट दे मस्ट है एक्सपीरियंस we yes. can imagine and, and this not for him like on that Ram, ramani ji said i have uh, i remember two people the one who hoisted the flag after taking 17 bullets on him in tiger hill yes yes there and are then ah. and then anuj nayar who was bestowed with paramvir chakra who is called also called as tiger of dras yes yes his Param mother Param said the other day i feel he is around me even now so mm-hmm. these are the brave mothers and the brave families who for whom we celebrate all the festivals as we want republic day or other diwali but for them the husbands come or the son comes home yes, this is the yes. festival day for them thank you so much and uh, now i call upon gopal patro ji who gives who really really makes the mrl flag hi with his instruments with his singing knowledge and today he is going to tell us something his man ki baat gopal ji thank you very much vinay ji good evening all my friends uh, though i am not a very good speaker i would uh, like to speak my man ki baat <laughs> on, on this occasion uh, i am very thankful to uh, dr sangupta ji for giving me this opportunity uh, most most of the talk which i have prepared has been covered already by modi ji and navin ji and uh, uh, i would like to focus my attention therefore on uh, uh, the importance of training our children in the in the patriotism because it is very essential for uh, training our young ma- children for the future of our nation to these high values and ideals of patriotism and uh, love towards mother motherland etc uh, we are fortunate in in our group in our uh, mrl group to listen to these very enlightening discourses on uh, this uh, uh, on the occasion of independence day and uh, republic day particularly and we come to know about various aspects of the patriotism the past patriots unsung heroes of uh, nation of the nation uh, so i i would like to ask myself a question what should we do in order to transfer this knowledge to our children uh, it is very true that uh, the defense forces give a very uh, rigorous training to our uh, to the uh, defense people i mean uh, the trainees uh, which not only includes the phys- rigorous physical uh, exercise etc but they are kept focused on the tales of various war heroes day in and day out and that's why they develop the spirit of patriotism in their blood but the same thing is also necessary defending the country is only one aspect building the nation is another aspect Uh, so that means uh, the common people uh, should also be subjected to such training uh, and unfortunately what i have seen in our history books we are loaded with uh, tales about Mus- muslim uh, uh, muslim uh, emperors and uh, some irrelevant things uh, and we are mostly 
uh, asked to remember the dates uh, which, um, on which date this particular uh, death battle has taken place and that's how we made perhaps the history subject very uh, unpopular instead of doing this why don't we why don't our government include uh, in the curriculum true stories of great sacrifices made by leaders in the defense sector in the present times success of award winning sports persons scientists artists etc and uh, not only that uh, if not only by by including in the curriculum but by exposing them to uh, such uh, uh, patriotic talk by virtue of uh, videos and uh, things like that uh, and uh, nowhere in the curriculum we speak about the successful national missions in the field of science and technology uh, so this is one aspect second aspect is uh, uh, the government could take initiative in naming the places of interest to commemorate uh, prominent, prominent personalities, uh, to name after uh, distinguished persons, not only in defense sector, but in other sectors also. Uh, recently, today only I have uh, read in the newspaper that uh, government has taken a decision to name 24 islands of um, no. Andaman and Nicobar after our Paramvir Sakra holders, uh, awardees. And this is, I think it is a very good initiative. Uh, of, of course, in this particular case, uh, uh, they are, uh, there is, uh, there cannot be any competition, but to be, in such particular uh, initiatives, there is a lot of debate that takes place. Who is to be named? Uh, whose name is to be put on that, in that particular? For example, in the uh, for example, in the naming of our uh, Navi Mumbai International Airport, uh, uh, several names uh, several names have been suggested. And finally, uh, one name has come out: D.B. Patil National Institute, National International uh, Airport. It has come. Uh, but people, <coughs> people were wondering who is this uh, D.B. Patil. And uh, once uh, interest is created in a particular name, uh, people. See what is his history and how he is prominent. So, so that I think that is also a good initiative. How one can bring unsung heroes to the forefront. Uh, and one more aspect which I would like to bring to light is that. Uh, we are generally uh, not very interested in showing up our uh, our uh, beautiful historic places as tourist spots. Uh, I have uh, visited several. I mean, uh, uh, abroad I have seen people have. Uh, People do a lot of publicity to their uh, places of uh, interest. Uh, and although the place is uh, nothing 
different from what we see here and they um, put a lot of praise on that particular uh, place and then uh, it, it makes really interesting to uh, study that particular thing. So uh, similarly we have a lot of places in our country. Uh, I had uh, visited one uh, um, one place in Orissa, which is uh, a what is that Bora Caves, uh, and surprisingly, it is very similar to similar to the caves that I have seen in uh, USA and other places. But there was no mention of that. I had not. I had never come across that particular cave name. Uh, in our uh, this thing, only recently I have seen that uh, uh, the Bora Caves has has been uh, taken up for development, and um, it is made a, a, a tourist attraction place. So, like this, the government uh, I think should take up steps to inculcate the sense of patriotism to our children and common men and that is very very essential because um, uh, it's uh, and, and it's true that uh, people attend uh, the flag hoisting and flag unfurling ceremonies in uh, during republic day and uh, independence day but uh, the i mean uh, children they have the uh, they are exposed to this only on party, on this day and they are more interested in the sports that take place during these occasions and uh, things like that. Therefore, uh, it is necessary to give a serious consideration to all these aspects and uh, I think we should influence where, uh, whatever, whoever is, I mean, uh, influence the government in order to take these steps, in order to make patriotism a very good, um, worthy subject for the students. Thank you. Thank you, Gobalji. I do agree with you that next generation should be uh, made aware of all the patriotism feeling because of other sacrifices what we have got, not by distorted history, but by visual arts and the real history being told to them in a nice way, play or visual arts and all that. Thank you for the suggestion. I hope the government takes it up. And it is generally some people, I don't want to name being political. They say, Dusre ke flag mein chand hai. Hamare flag mein bale hi chand na ho, but hamare flag chand mein hai. We should be proud of that. So, very clap for our uh, astronaut who went and planted the flag over there. Hum to aise kehte hai, maati ko maa kehte hai, tiranga ke saamne sar dukkate hai. Bina vardi ke sipai hai hum sab. So we are also forces. And now, who else is better to talk on the finale topic other than our shining star and a pioneer of MRN, Samta Sen Gupta, please. <laughs> Thank you very much, Veena. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And uh, very well spoken by all our MRL members about uh, uh, great people, great heroes, and about uh, different uh, topics of patriotism. Really, bahut acha laga. Sabko really. Thank you very much for enlightening us, in fact. And now, just now, very well spoken by you also, the previous lines. <laughs> very nice words by you. <laughs> so, uh, today, my topic also was uh, about uh, a proud, brave, and bold son of India, Alluri Sitarama Raju from Andhra Pradesh. He was born on 4th July, 1897. Uh, he didn't have uh, higher education, but he had got a lot of uh, socio-economic and uh, political situation prevailing on that particular situation during the um, British era in our country. And uh, uh, at the age of 18, very tender age, at the age of 18, 
he became a sannyasi. And he decided to give his services to the tribal community of Rampa region. Rampa region. So uh, Rampa region consists of uh, uh, approximately 28,000 population of tribal people. And their uh, main cultivation, land of cultivation, their main process is that uh, traditional system. It is called Podu system of land cultivation. So they are very happy, Adivasi's tribal community. During those days, that time, British authorities have decided to construct a railway line and ship ad through the Rampa region. But uh, they need a labor force. Laborers are required to cover construction uh, activities and all. So they have a cunning plan. They have implemented Madras Forest Act to this Rampa region. So according to that act, these tribals, they, they are banned their, um, to uh, cultivation of land according to their um, traditional podu system. And they are banned to make free movements in the forest. They are also banned to touch the minor forest produce. That means uh, total bans on this tribal community. So, Bechare, they when they suffered from starvation, unka khana pina tha, unka traditional way of that land, that podu system of cultivation, that is banned. Then how can they survive? The only option in front of them is just to work as laborers in the construction sites of British companies. So, Alluri Sita Ramaraju, now he was furious, very furious. He decided to revolt. So the first thing done by him was to uh, tribes will jagde hote hain. Many tribes will be there. Bhot jagde hote hain. He the first thing done by him was he united all the tribal people, all the tribal people. And the second important thing is he forced and he requested and he asked each and everybody almost to stop drinking of alcohol and. He created a tribal army. Then he taught them the guerrilla system, of, um, guerrilla war, uh, war system, that warfare, another guerrilla system. He taught that uh, system also. Actually, Alluri Sitaramarazu believed in violence. He said, through violence only, India can get freedom, but not through nonviolence. That was his strong belief. So. For that, he needed guns, arms, bullets, ammunition, so many things he needed. So how to get all those things? He planned. He decided attacks on police station along with his tribal army. He used to do lightning attacks. He, he did uh, the first police attack was on Chintapalli police station on 22nd August 1922. And uske baad, series of police uh, attacks on police stations were uh, done. So the police station attack karta tha, all ammunition, everything, loot karke le jata tha. And whoever uh, patriots and freedom fighters are jailed in that jail, unko free, free, free karke wahan se bhaag jata tha. That was his system. So now the British were panicked. That's why, what did they do? They didn't understand it. The disorganized, illiterate, these drinking tribal people, how can they manage? So organized attacks on police station. They are totally terrified, panicked. So they started tempting the local people. They started tempting the local people with the costly gifts, with the 10,000 rupees reward, and with so many things. To get information about Alluri Sita Ramaraju are to bring him dead or alive but uh, they were not successful so then at the end they uh, called for the malbar army and these army people these army people thoroughly thorough search operations they have done they have done search operations and unfortunately on uh, 
ಸೆವೆಂತ್ ಮೇ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಅಲ್ಲೂರಿ ಸೀತಾರಾಮ ರಾಜು ವಾಸ್ ಕಾಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಇಮಿಡಿಯೇಟ್ಲಿ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಡೇಟ್ ಇಮಿಡಿಯೇಟ್ಲಿ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಮೊಮೆಂಟ್ ಇ ವಾಸ್ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಡೇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ಎಟ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಡೆತ್ ಈಸ್ ಏಜ್ ಈಸ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ದೋ ತಿನ್ ತ್ರೀ ಟು ತ್ರೀ ಮಂತ್ಸ್ ಲೆಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ದ ಡ್ಯೂರೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ರಿವೋಲ್ಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಟೂ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಸಾಲ್ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ಮೈ because of him so many people were encouraged and inspired thousands of people were encouraged and inspired by his uh, heroic deeds and all so ek bolte hai na hum diyenge aur marenge ye vatan tere liye we great patriots these are all really vatan ke liye jiye the vatan ke liye mare the wo log yes. but 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 they are not dead they are alive in our hearts they are yes. in our hearts really yes. i am really koti koti pranam hai jo all our patriots and to all our jawans and to all our unsung heroes and heroines to all our people and koti koti pranam ke liye thank you very much veena thanks samta we felt like we are uh, watching a one act play and not a talk on that note thanks for the enriching talks and also sorry for crossing the time limit sir and in the name of patriotism we took this liberty let's all say vande mataram that's vande mataram thank you everyone thanks to you veena you done you had done more research than i thank you krishna